In this session, we would like to present how Parasoft software testing platform streamlines development and compliance workflows and improves developers' productivity. Our story starts with the developer pulling the code from a Git repository. Source code includes infrastructure, toolchain, and pipeline definition files. So the development environment, including Testing tools is automatically provisioned with containerized tool chains according to those definition files. So compiler, build system, static analyzer, unit testing framework, code coverage tools, these are all distributed in form of containers. And once the code is locally tested by developer, it's pushed to repository, uh, which triggers the CI CD pipeline. And here again, the development environment is dynamically composed using containers. Um, the same containers, um, um, the same containers are used for local development and pipelines, which assures consistency between developers desktop and CI/CD nodes. And when CI/CD pipeline executes, it goes through um, tests, which break the build in case of uh, failed requirements. And information about failed tests is delivered back to developers for remediation. And once developers um, fix the problems, code is integrated with the stable stream. And tests and compliance reports are dynamically generated in the pipelines and made available for audits and certification um, process in an uh, offline and online form. Now I would like to switch to the demonstration part. And for this, I will be using um, Linux virtual machine. So let me quickly log in. This is my local development environment. Uh, in this demonstration, I will be focusing on static analysis integration with modern development workflows. So more or less um, what we covered on the, on the last slide. So again, this is my local development environment. Uh, as a developer for my activities, I'm using the popular VS Code editor. Um, my source code is in GitHub, uh, which is also my CACD platform. And here in the VS Code, I have a local clone of my repository. And together with my source code, I have everything I need for my development. My toolchain is containerized. Um, the Docker file here allows me to instantiate the infrastructure whenever and whenever I need it. It includes um, compiler, build tools, um, and of course, Parasoft uh, testing toolchain. So I do not need to install uh, locally. And my GitHub workflow is, um, is defined in a, in a YAML file here. It contains several steps, including the quality gate with Parasoft C++ test, where, um, where compliance is enforced. And for my project, I have a requirement to, uh, let's say, be MISRA and uh, CERT uh, compliant. And my compliance requirements are codified and kept together with the source code. Here I have a couple of um, configuration files. Um, actually, I have two configuration files. Um, one is one contains um, um, limited selection of static analysis checkers for local execution to before publishing the code to the to the repository just to make sure I'm not missing something something obvious and the other one with complete selection of static analysis checkers for MISRA compliance that's the uh, final verification that's used for the final verification of my uh, of my code. Um, against MISRA, uh, MISRA standard, and this one is used in the, this one is enforced in the CI uh, CD. Um, so now I'm ready to start working on a, on a, on a new feature. Um, so my first step is to create a feature branch. Let's call it feature ABCD. My feature branch is ready. And uh, my goal is to implement a new functionality, and um, this is ability to print empty test message, whatever it means. So I just created a, a new source code, and I want to execute this quick local scan with a subset of static analysis checkers. Um, 
just to make sure I'm not missing something obvious before publishing the code. And as you can see, uh, Parasoft toolchain is executed uh, from the container. Static analysis um, is, is done in the background and I get the feedback. Um, this, uh, this item in problems view represents a static analysis finding. Um, if I click, I'm taken to the re relevant place in the source code. Um, in this demonstration, we're focusing on integrations with the workflows, so I'm not going to elaborate about this specific problem. If I'm interested, I can get more detail, I can investigate the documentation. But for now, let's assume that um, this is security related issue. It doesn't like the way how I initialize the buffer. So let me quickly correct the code and again, run the static analysis locally to validate um, my uh, most recent changes. And I, will, I should get the feedback in a, in a second. And now um, my code is clean, no more problems reported. So I'm ready to push my changes to the repository. Let's say new feature implemented. Okay, let's commit it and let's publish the branch. And if we go now to um, GitHub, um, we see that uh, the new branch is already there. And obviously as a developer, I'm interested in uh, integrated my changes with a, with a stable uh, with a stable branch, with a, with a stable stream. So I need to create a, a pull request to, um, to get my changes um, approved. And the pull request, as a part of pull request, uh, this quality gate is executed. Uh, which includes um, Parasoft static analysis for, for, for MISRA compliance. So this is already um, running in the background. Um, if we drill down here, we should see some, some output. So we see that um, the pipeline is progressing and um, in, a, in a couple of seconds, it should finish. Um, this time we are running this um, the second configuration, which contains the uh, complete collection of, um, of of MISRA um, static analysis checkers. So it may take a little bit longer, but not too long. And um, if we go back to the if we go back to the uh, main page of our pull request, um, we should see a feedback in a moment so let me let me refresh it not yet refresh it one more time okay and uh we I, I got my feedback and i see that i'm not ready to merge my changes because some additional problems were reported and uh and this is where value of the close integration uh, where the value of static analysis close integration with cicd um, is obvious. I get these problems reported uh, exactly in a place where I expect them attached to my pull request. We have two more additional findings. Um, if I click here, I get more details. Uh, it shows me a um, collection of uh, snippets with the source code with um, uh, ad additional helper annotations that explain why the problem um, was reported. So I get enough information here to act on these findings and to um, improve my source code. And if I'm working with a small set of problems on a small set of problems, I'm probably fine even doing changes here in, 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 in GitHub. Uh, if I'm working with uh, larger batches uh, of violations, it may be more convenient uh, for me to go back to my favorite VS code and load the results directly to the to the IDE and our extension for VS code um, integrates with GitHub so it understands what's my current uh, feature branch it goes to GitHub it identifies the most relevant um, the most relevant pipeline and, sh and shows me the, the the latest results so I can analyze them um, and change code in a in a convenient way and again, um, I won't be um, go diving into details of this problem, so let me quickly um, fix the code, uh, fix the code, and submit my changes. Okay, I'm ready. 
and let's say static analysis applied. And I'm publishing my changes to, to, to GitHub. And if we go back to the pull request page, um, We should we, we see here that um, my 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 push operation triggered the pipeline again. My changes are again pushed through the compliance um, compliance gate, and if I have no more problems, I will be ready to um, to merge my code with the with the stable with the stable stream. All right, so uh, let me continue. Um, so um, I, I want to touch one more subject around static analysis. So what we just saw was an example of um, basic developers workflow. This kind of workflows are essential for compliance, but for any larger organization, this is not sufficient. To eliminate the risk of not achieving compliance on time and preparing for audits and assessments, organization need a dedicated reporting which shows the, the bigger picture. And um, what you can see here is um, um, uh, Parasol DTP, our web-based reporting system with specialized MISRA reporting. Uh, this dashboard contains a collection of widgets uh, which present static analysis results for MISRA compliance. So all these compliance activities we were looking at a second ago from the developer perspective are monitored by this tool and we can see trends we can see the, the the bigger picture it shows me the uh, percentage of violations of uh, of misra guidelines i'm compliant with it shows me number of violations for different categories of misra so it, it speaks in the language of standard it's easier for me to understand where i am with my compliance process whether i need some extra actions to make sure i will achieve compliance on time here I see that I'm doing pretty good for mandatory guidelines, which are priority for me. I have only 71 violations. Uh, for required and advisory, I have um, 2,000 and 1,000 violations uh, respectively. And if we if we drill down, um, we can see uh, more details. Um, this report is interactive, so I can uh, drill down here. Uh, down to the level of uh, of source code where as a say uh, functional safety or compliance officer i can make some decisions i can assign it to developers or do basic triaging or say that given issue is uh, to be ignored and this system generates um, a collection of 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 different reports that are required by um, by MISRA, so um, it automates a very important part of the workflow. That's another example showing um, CERT C, so security oriented standard compliance. Here we automate um, risk assessment. So, basing on the several factors that are attached to the static analysis checkers, um, overall priority is computed by this system and um, all the findings are um, grouped are, are put together in a form of a list showing from uh, starting uh, with those that are severe likely to occur and inexpensive to fix so it, it helps me to maximize the output from the um, from from the development process so that's about um, static analysis. And um, yeah, so far we've been focusing on static analysis and its integration into development workflows and application for coding standard enforcement, but software compliance with um, safety standards such as 26062 requires applying other testing practices, including runtime testing, such as unit testing, fault injection, code coverage, and these runtime testing techniques tend to be more complicated and challenging than static analysis, especially that it's uh, recommended. It's a recommendation from the standard from 26262 to execute, to perform these tests in the environment that is, I'm quoting standard here, as close as possible to the production environment. So in many situations, we will want to execute tests on real microcontroller or on the simulator. And um, 
uh, let me switch to another demonstration project. That's a last demonstration from my side. Uh, what you can see here is an Eclipse development environment set up for building and debugging the code for ARM microcontrollers. And specifically in my configuration, I'm using ARM simulator for executing the code. And this ID, I have C++ test uh, Eclipse plugin, which um, helps me to stay productive with my unit testing and code coverage um, compliance requirements. Because let's say that for this project, I need to document achieving 100% um, requirements, uh, testing coverage and source code level um, coverage. And for me as a developer, the starting point is um, a requirements view that is provided by our tool. Um, this view um, allows me to import my um, low level software requirements from an uh, original system of record. So be it uh, Polarion, JAMA, or CodeBeamer, whatever is used in the, in the process for defining and storing requirements, um, we, can, we can import this data. So I have everything I need to um, develop the new code, that's my requirement, and also develop tests that validate this requirement. And let's say that um, I already implemented uh, my requirements, that's a new source code. And now my challenge is to validate these requirements and add um, unit test cases um, for these requirements following the test specification provided by my, um, let's say, architect. And with C++ test, I have um, several ways to create unit test cases. Um, I can create these test cases just by typing the code manually exactly the same way as I would do it with um, Google test or boost test or any other popular framework. I can use graphical editor to create test cases, which eliminates um, tedious typing activities and um, also lowers the skill skills bar required for creating unit test cases and enables this practice for less technical team members such as um, QA, QA team or verification validation team. Or I can try to automatically jumpstart my process by automatically generating test cases. And what you can see here um, on the right hand side, the editor I just opened, is an example of a test suite with automatically generated tests. Um, these tests are generated um, basing on the information we get from the code during the static analysis. Um, so it includes uh, some data and control simulations with, um, with some heuristics um, with the overall goal to um, penetrate code as much as possible. So these tests, these automatically generated tests are not good for testing requirements. Um, but they are good for stress testing, error guessing, or fast testing. But for me as a developer, they are an excellent starting point because I don't need to type that much code. I can review these test cases, trying to um, adapt, tweak them to match my, uh, my requirements, my test specifications. And if I, after perhaps some modifications, find that a specific test is good for validating given requirement, I can annotate this test case as a test case that validates the requirement. And as you can see, this test case is now attached to this test specification and what follows to, to this requirement as a test that is basically validating it. And, and now um, we can execute these tests. Let's assume that we've done very similar procedure on, on other um, test cases. Now the tool is using um, cross compiler to build the test harness and it will be uh, the test binary will be executed on the on the simulator and and as you can see my tests were executed um, uh, status is um, is okay um, and I get some code coverage. Uh, uh, and I get some code coverage um, information here. Um, and, um, 
And this is an important part of the process because my requirement, in addition to assuring that we have a, that we have a, a hundred percent of requirements testing coverage, is also to assure that um, we have. Um, let me run it one more time. This time the full test suite that we have uh, code coverage that we have a hundred percent of uh, of code coverage. And as you can see, after I executed all these test cases, I'm very close to hundred percent, but I'm missing coverage in these two specific lines. So for me now, this is a challenge to create test cases that will be that that will validate these um, these two lines. And this is very common situation. Here we have an branch in the code that is supposed to handle a failure in reading sensor. So I'm unlikely to go for something like this uh, during my regular testing. And, uh, and it's sometimes very time consuming to understand what should be the stimulation for the source code, what should be the parameters um, to, um, to force the code uh, to change the execution path so that these uncovered lines uh, are covered. And here is where our tool provides an, an extra value. We can select um, lines of code that were not executed so far by our testing. And um, we can use uh, something we call coverage advisor. Um, that's, um, that's a module of our solution that um, uses this advanced data and control flow analysis to simulate the paths in the code, and it um, and it will it 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 provides uh, information for me um, what values I need to use in my test cases and how I need to change, for example, response from the functions that are called when test is executed um, to make sure that um, these lines are not covered. So in this example, we see that. Um, channel to read the input parameter for, to, for the function needs to be greater than five and uh, smaller than 255. And also response from read sensor function um, needs to be uh, different than two and simply equal, equal to one. So this information is very helpful for me. I can apply it to create a, to create a test case and satisfy all my requirements for testing for testing coverage. 